May I proceed? Your Honor, and if it pleases the court, on behalf of the prosecuting team, I would like to thank you for allowing us a proper forum to present our case. We have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the defendant, Mickey Jackson, is guilty of Class A misdemeanor, unauthorized use of a computer, of Class E felony computer trespass, and of Class A misdemeanor computer tampering in the fourth degree. We have demonstrated through our three witnesses that Mr. Jackson is undoubtedly guilty of these crimes that he's been charged with. You have heard from Dr. Chris Dean, principal of Silas Cohen High School. His testimony has helped to prove that Mickey Jackson indisputably gained access to both the schools and therefore Dean's personal online accounts without proper authorization. That he was extremely distressed about his school's recently installed proxy server, that he, without permission, did indeed change the proxy server settings. That Val Watson, advisor of Slicks, approached him about making changes in the school's computer system, and that Jackson overstepped his boundaries in complying with this request. And that Mr. Watson never conceded giving him authorization to change the proxy server. The defense maintains that Mr. Jackson was given a password to open files. He had the password, but that doesn't mean he has the right to commit computer trespass. A police officer is given a gun. Does that give him the right to commit murder? You've also heard from Pat Chang, who was directly involved with installing the school's new system. His company, DRI, was in essence solely responsible with proposing and instituting the proxy server, which served as a buffer to monitor student usage. It prevented certain school records from being accessed and placed limits on obtainable files by recording each site accessed by students in the district. You've heard him state all this. You've also heard him testify that the students' privacy rights were explicitly stated in the AUP or acceptable use policy passed by the school. Any changes authorized and executed by the district were in compliance with this policy. Mr. Chang, who was a temporary district employee at the time, has been established as having clear knowledge of this. Furthermore, he has testified that Jackson's actions were well beyond what a student could possibly be authorized to do. Finally, you've heard from A.J. Gates, a known member of the Slicks Club. Mr. Gates has testified, having been present at the time, that Mickey Jackson took it upon himself to change the times on the main school computer's proxy server and cache. He has proven that Mr. Jackson had utilized the school's, uh, utilized the high school's online system as a political device, using it to convey embittered and slanderous personal messages about Principal Dean. The defense has failed to establish any reasonable doubt that Mickey Jackson was the force behind virtually dismantling an institu institution that was both protected by the law and set up by the school district. Mr. Jackson took it upon himself to go above and beyond the line of acceptable com student computer usage in the East Bay District. We must remember that he was, in fact, a student at the time of his actions. Being a student, he was required to abide by school policy, a school policy he himself was familiar with or suffer the consequences. Mr. Watson has even admitted this. Hence, uh, this offense is undeniably a crime punishable by law. Not only this, but we must also keep in mind that Mickey Jackson violated the trust of Silas Cohen High School and its officials, namely Dr. Christine and Mr. Val Watson. In People v. O'Grady, the state ruled that an individual is guilty of computer trespass, a Class E felony, when he or she unlawfully accesses another's protected computer records. It is evident beyond any reasonable doubt that Mickey Jackson himself unlawfully accessed protected computer records according to the acceptable use policy before changing them. To contest this fact otherwise would be utterly specious. In People v. Versace, the state ruled that a person is guilty of misdemeanor computer tampering in the fourth degree when he or she causes a computer system to be, quote, different in some particular characteristic without changing it to something else. Hence, one is guilty of this if a system is sabotaged in any way. 
again, Mr. Jackson, by definition, is clearly guilty of this as well. Without completely adulterating the system to become something else, Mr. Jackson altered his school's pre-existing computers. According to People vs. Angeles, a person can be considered guilty of Class A misdemeanor unauthorized use of a computer only if the computer has a device to prevent this. We have proven also that Mr. Jackson, who was entrusted um, by Slick's advisor Val Watson with a password to open files, violated the school's trust and clear-cut policies by altering official school records. We have proven that he acted in an improper and illegal manner. We also have proved the following three points that we set out to prove in the opening statement. Did the East Bay set up precautions to hurt or help the students? Obviously, to help. Did Mickey Jackson overstep jurisdiction? Yes, certainly. Did Mickey Jackson act responsibly? No, not at all. Please consider all that you have heard just now and over the course of this entire litigation. We, the prosecution, have faith that you, Your Honor, will take everything into account and make the correct decision. We hope that you will find Mickey Jackson guilty of all crimes that he is here in charge. Thank you.